Hello, survivors. Welcome back to the garage, the waste's vault of knowledge. You're watching the most in-depth and useful show for every true fan of Crosshound. Subscribe now and don't forget to click the bell icon, never to miss another episode full of good stuff straight from the devs. Buckle up, fellas. It's go time. Survivors, one can't just stop after a couple of assembled hovercrafts. Today in Test Drive, we'll show you which cars can also be crafted out of scientists' available parts. Cancer Ship 2.0 You already know the first version, but we've dared to level it up. And we're talking here about not just a craft, but a whole leviathan. Remember Cancer Ship? The very idea of a land ship is crazy enough, but a flying model? Now that's a new level. First thing we do is throw off caterpillars and change to the Icarus hovers. We need six of them. Think it's not enough? Come on, moreover, hovers help the Dreadnought develop such speed the original caterpillar version hasn't even dreamed of. Remember? We deemed its slowness to be a massive flaw? Well, it's no more. Taken into account the weight category, of course. Cancer Ship has now more chances to catch up with quick fighters. However, it now has a predictable defect, serious drifts, which often turn into endless walls. Leviathan is driven by AI, which is constantly allowing for shifting. However, some weapons still lose the target. Leviathan is ready for assault flights on rocket hovers. It's a good thing there's no pilot there, otherwise he'd have vomited. Carlson This second craft we built from scratch. It's an experimental craft of a battle quadcopter. Those are all the hype these days, so why not? So, Carlson. We cross the axes so they make the letter H. Then we put an Icarus on each end. Let's take Pilgrim Cabin as a basis. Thus, we'll have enough energy. Underneath it, in special niches, we put a gas generator and a light engine. Behind the cabin, we put a gas tank, a radio set, chameleon, and an ammunition box. We have nine points of energy for weaponry and three places where to weld it. One on the roof cabin and two more on each side. Among scientists' weaponry, Spark, Synthesis, and Aurora need four points of energy. We can put them in identical pairs or combine with each other. If we choose out of old weapons, Vector, Defender, and Caucasus can be used. In the center of the craft, we install one more Dawn Children creation. An epic protective field module, Aegis Prime. Then we use parts of the body to cover the axis and valuable equipment. It's ready. Now you have um, a quadro hover. To evade a counterpunch, use Chameleon, activating it before the attack. Aegis Prime is a last resort, in case invisibility has already ended and the enemies are still alive. Protective field won't defend the hovers, but it will save supporting axis, which you don't want to break. A more compact craft would have protected the structure. However, the shifting gravity center would overthrow the ride. For the last several weeks, the only thing survivors have been talking about are Dawn Children and their soon appearance in the wastes. The most hyped thing are hovers. On the threshold of their availability, we answer the relevant questions. What's faster? A craft on wheels or on hovers? A ride on wheels, all other things being equal, is faster. To be more exact, a heavy ride will become faster on hovers because surface slopes no longer interfere with it. A fast and light ride, however, will become slower. How many hovers can be put on a single ride? There's no serious limits to this. As wheels, hovers need to be installed in pairs. You can put one, but then a ride will tumble and will only be able to crawl. Two parts, you need to perfectly balance the ride. Four or six of those will be enough for most crafts. Heavy rides will need eight. A Leviathan, ten hovers. This number might be called a limit. More illogical than a real one, though. Of course, each case is a unique one. 
As you have seen during the test drive, you can use less number of hovers in favor of better weaponry. It's up to the player. Can I use both hovers and wheels at the same time? Yeah. As a result, you can get either a death machine or an ugly hybrid begging to destroy itself. If you install wheels in front of the ride, it'll drive and turn smoothly. If you weld them behind, the ride will play up time after time. In the middle of this, there's a vast space for your experiments, which we are eager to see. How fast can hovers be destroyed? Icarus hovers have 200 points of structure. That's more than wheels, but less than caterpillars and mechanical legs. Due to its form factor, hovers often collide with the enemy's rides, and because of the mechanical damage, they break fast. All in all, the part is quite fragile. Which weapon is the best against hovercrafts? Flying rides are always on the move, so it's hard to provide accurate fire at hovers. Rockets are the best option, because they break hovers with a single hit. It's way easier than holding the part at gunpoint. Ramming is also effective, but you'll need to perform the maneuver. Which weapon is best to install on a hover? It goes without saying, guns of Don children are best compatible with their own technology. Scientist weaponry doesn't require precision and allows for maneuvering without aiming. It would also be easier to get accustomed to spark, which hits any aim within the scope cone. With this gun, your hovercraft can endlessly spin around the enemy, evading predictability typical for a wheelbase ride. Let's look how classical weaponry works with the Executioner. Hovers allow it to follow the victim as long as it needs, gradually turning the body. And if the enemy is close, one abrupt movement allows to turn quick and rebuke. It's not easy to aim, but with caterpillars, legs or wheels, such maneuver wouldn't have been possible at all. Should I put all my team on hovers? It's not the best idea. Close-range rides are in danger because of fragility of hovers and snipers due to the decreased precision. For ramming lovers, hovers are doomed. When they're broken, the ride is done. Flying crafts are better combined with the land transport. Don't run to the extremes. For years, Relay Broadcast Station Control 17 had been an important tactical location. Military forces used it not only to connect with center, but also as a block point for contaminated northern cities. When armed people left the station, raiders found a settlement here. Judging by lots of left containers, there were many people living there. They were probably looking for a secret entrance into the far-reaching web of military bunkers. Old documents had some info on them. They say there are still people living in secret underground hideouts who have survived the crossout, mostly high-profile officials. It seems that the raiders didn't manage to find those and left. Today, this place looks more like a scrap waste than an important object. Most combats on the map Control 17 have pretty much the same scenario. Both teams sort things out closer to the center of the location. More coordinated groups put heavy armored craft under fire while fast allies try to capture the enemy's base or attack from behind. A small labyrinth of containers and scraps of metal in the center helps them escape the pursuit of sniper shots. Fans of long-range rides get to play defenders of control points from where the place is exposed to fire. Due to its planning and available opportunities, the map is a treat for those who love Old City, Rock City or Founders Canyon. You can use lots of types of transport here. That's why let's just name those which aren't a good idea to use. If possible, don't use crafts with mandrakes and guided missiles. This location doesn't have enough open space for a comfortable aiming. We're ready to answer your questions, survivors. Is there any way to hide from radar? No. It'll mark you on the map under any conditions. Will a symmetry mode be added to the build mode? We're not against this feature. Maybe it'll be added in the future. Will we ever be able to raise or rotate the cabins when building a vehicle? No, because there are construction reasons behind it.
Well, that's it for today, survivors. Looking forward to seeing you in a week to spill some more facts about the Waste's battles. Don't waste your time. Gain experience and toughen up in fights. Also, subscribe and do me a favor, will you? Tell your friends about the show. Leave comments below. It's important for us to know your opinion. Be seeing you.